we wanted to continue the conversation specifically exactly on what I just touched upon, which is this intersection of creativity and imagination in shaping the future. And that's why I'm thrilled now to be talking to a look who you know uh, was featured in the film and had such amazing things to say. Alok is an artist who uses every type of medium that you can think of to explore issues of race, gender, um, and to center our humanity and to center the human condition. Alok is also a writer whose latest book um, is Beyond the Gender Binary, which seeks to be a primer on gender fluidity Alok, um, thank you so much for joining us. You're kind of like, you're now in that category of people that just have one name, like Beyonce, Prince, Cher. So thank you so That's much. That's what for I'm trying to get to. Okay. I really want to just be a one name kind of girl boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's also important for us to underscore and remember that Alok's pronouns are they and them, which is something that they unravel in part in Beyond the Gender Binaries. Thank you so much for first of all, sitting down um, today, but also during the film, I think you had so many powerful and insightful things to say, and I'm just so appreciative that you have come on to talk about them. Thanks so much for having me. One of the things that you, you talk about and you mention is, in the film is um, that sometimes what people see can be reductive, right? It can actually stifle their imagination, stifled their definitions of us. Um, that comment that you have about there's so many worlds within you and are we willing to explore them that you're so much more than we can see, I thought was real powerful. But at the same time, you are an amazing artist in so many different media and you use art to try to expand people's minds. So can you talk about this, that tension between the limitation of sight and the power of sight and how that imagination through that through visual through the visual arts is important for for a future totally so i think my critique of visibility is that it's we specifically focus on the image without simultaneously also holding all the different registers and so what i'm trying to do is like look but also feel but also think but also touch, but also smell, but also there's so many other ways of engaging that are beyond the visual. And I think when it comes to trans people, for so long we've been denied existence beyond visibility. There's always this idea of quote, looking trans, or this idea of like, oh, she's not real enough, or he's not masculine enough. And it's like, it regulates the potentiality of what transness could be when we constantly discipline it into the visual. Because also in order for us to see something, we have to already have a frame of reference for it. And I think that we are missing out on noticing so many things that we're not able to see because there's no frame of reference for it. So I think a lot of what I liked about our conversations I was speaking to, so much of what I understand the future of transness to be is surrendering to the complexity of gender that we may never know it and that's its power. Right, right, right. Um, whoops, sorry about that. Um, but also, we also know that um, that imagination in and of itself is power, right? I mean, to a certain degree, you, like everyone, but you in some really powerful ways, create yourself out of the inspiration that you feel inside. And I think that that is something that is underestimated within everyone, is the ability for us to manifest ourselves. and. Can you talk about that? And I mean, you do a lot of speaking to young people across the country and um, I'm wondering how you inspire them to do the same. Mm -hmm. I think that the body is a canvas and we are one of our most spectacular creative uh, projects. And we're constantly told that art is something that's external to us, but I think living is actually one of the most incredible art forms. And that's why I loved what Fatima is saying in the film is actually being able to embrace your life journey as your creative practice and recognizing that embodiment is actually how you're bringing art to the world every day. And this is the legacy we come from. I think it's especially important to name in light of pride is future and past are false binary as well because there's so many continuities that exist. And one of the themes that I loved in the film was that connection because you have people like Sylvia and Marsha were literally being criminalized for their creative self-expression. That Sylvia would literally be thrown into prison as a teenager because they would say that she was 
doing female impersonation from the shoulders up when she was wearing makeup. And we think about, okay, what was Sylvia doing when she continued to go back out presenting herself in this way? What she was actually saying is, I demand the right to author myself and no one else gets to interpret me because interpretation can be its own form of containment. And I think that what I really am trying to do with my art practice and what I'm trying to get young people to realize is like, you're allowed to be difficult and you're allowed to be complicated. You're allowed to be strange. You're not necessarily need to be understood in order to be accepted. And we have to break out of this kind of fatigue that's like everyone needs to know everything about us in order to get us. Maybe you don't know it, but you know that we still matter and that's what's important. That's right. And even, I mean, that is a really a point that I really wanted to make in the film, which is how um, there so much, I, I, I would wonder, right, the degree to which they were aware that they were actually helping to create a future for us because their imagination that they had and the embodiment that they have for themselves is such a source of, source of inspiration for us right now in so many different ways. And that one of the things I, I wanted to explore and thank you for touching on it is how even right now we're always still creating the future mm. and so there is that that, that false binary in a, in a way that we may not even be realizing you know mm. Mm. Um, um speaking of creating the futures one of the things i think that is really essential and the points that we make in the film is how um gen erasing gender binaries is actually essential for us to have a future, right? We can't have a future lots in gender binaries overall. And I'm just wondering if you have, what your thoughts are about that intersection between gender, gender binary and the future. Mm -hmm. I just wanna first say thank you so much for including that narrative in the film, because I think that that's a suppressed politics even within trans life and trans space, is that mm -hmm. so many people will say transgender recognition but they won't take it to the next step, which is we're trying to dismantle the gender binary. That's um, right. And I really appreciate in our conversation that we had for the film as well, we were saying actually, this is something that people who are trans women, trans men and non-binary can all get behind. And I wanted to explain that for the audience who might not understand. Moving beyond the gender binary is not about erasing your right to be a man or a woman. Rather, it's about saying that man and woman are two of infinite options and that we okay. should fight for a world where all genders are equally valid and where we don't have to have hierarchies that place masculinity over femininity, cisness over transness, and binariness over non-binariness. That in fact, all genders are your choice and your truth, and they don't need to be oppositional. And I think that that creates the capacity for so much resplendent and riotous freedom, because then we begin to do things not because we've been conditioned and categorized into them, but because we have to actually do the vulnerable work of asking, is this what I want? And I think what I love the most about the film and in each one of the narratives, you begin to see the risks that people went through to self-actualize. And for me, so much of what the power of transness is, is that we know that there's a kind of magic that comes from being able to realign your mind, body, and spirit that is so powerful that it's worth it. It's worth the social repression and the prejudice. And I think that that kind of spirit is the spirit that moves me to say, moving beyond the gender binary will help the world actually embrace its own creativity over conformity. Um, well, I just wanted to let you know that someone posted to Ari Noel Lee who wanted to say thank you for giving um, uh, them the power to be strange and the permission to be strange. There are also people um, that are watching this with their children um, and with their trans children right now who are also commenting saying um, how powerful uh, this conversation is and how you are. And in my last question to you, I think it's really important that, that we're ending with that is that, you know, um, Beyond the Gender Binary is written as a primer that anyone can understand. I mean, Chase said that in our quote, virtual green room before we came on um, about how that was the case for them. And I'm wondering what you hope that a child, for instance, that reads your book gets from it about themselves and what you hope that their parents who may not be non-binary get about a child who is and they read your book to try to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, we're 
in a moment of crisis where there's so much anti-trans sentiment and legislation that is targeting trans and gender non-conforming young people. And Chase spoke to that in, in light of thinking about what the legal civil rights status of trans rights are in this post-Supreme Court era. And so for me, it's really important that we center trans and gender non-conforming youth in all of our conversations, because these folks are the people who are being targeted right now. And one of the things that I really want young people to understand, and for those of us who are caretakers of young people and adults, is that actually there's nothing wrong with creative self-expression. We continually dismiss that as a, fa as a fad or a phase or a trend. And it's like, actually there's nothing wrong with literally just figuring it out and being a work in progress. And that you don't have to have finite answers, you don't have to have destinations, but it's so much more about the journey. And I think so much of the sacredness of transness is when we just surrender to the journey um, of just being like, you know what, I'm just gonna try to do what makes me feel right. And that, and part of our mentorship of young people, we need to actually give permission and license it's okay to take your time and it's okay to figure it out. And there are no right answers, but know that I support you in every leg of the, leg of the journey. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, people are continuing to thank you for helping to give language and expression to things that they did not have that for. Um, I think that you are a gift. Um, I am inspired by you. Um, and um, learn from you. And the other thing that people don't know about you because you appear to be and quite and are quite very serious is that you're also so much fun. <laughs> and um, I actually don't, I honestly don't see you enough, to be honest. It's so true, um, Marla, but let's just be real. Simultaneity looks like we can both have the politics and we can be at the dance party, politicking at the dance party at the same time. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But like you weren't you you weren't twerking as you were just unpacking the complexity of the gender binary, okay? Um, but thank you so much for um, for joining us tonight. If people want to get the, the Beyond the Gender Binary, they're out of luck until July because it's sold out. Yeah. Um, but um, please, when it comes back into print, get it. There's also a program that Alok has where you can buy. Um, the book and purchased it for people who may not be able to purchase it themselves who need it. So that's an ongoing program. Check out their uh, website, which is super easy to find. Alok, thank you so much for coming on. And um, I'm going to figure out a Zoom call or some situation next month for real. Yeah, for real. totally. And congratulations on this film. And thank you so much for gifting this to our community. This representation is going to save so many lives. So thank you. Thank Thank you, and you are a wonder person because you did costume change during the middle of the show. You know, uh, I'm not supposed to say things like that, but I just told everybody. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Have a great evening. Yeah. Cheers.